Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about why having a valuable on common is so important to the expected value of the set. Currently, A4 Revolt's expected value, if you were to buy a box, let's say you buy a box for $80 or let's say $90, you can expect to pull $132 of retail value. Now that's not buy list value, that is retail value from the box. So there is a lot of good things to like about A4 Revolt in opening a set. Talking about FNM, a lot of FNMs, including my current locals, they give you the choice to what packs do you want in standard? Do you want A4 Revolt? Do you want Kaladesh? Do you want Eldritch Moon? What do you want? So Battle for Zendikar is terrible because the outside Gideon, there's no good pulls and the expected value is so low, it's ridiculous. The same can be said about Oath the Gate Watch, although it's slightly better. Uh, Eldritch Moon and Shadows are meant. I mean, Eldritch Moon is not great because Emoko is banned, so it's a, ba a feel bad if you pull that. And Smuggler's Copter is banned in Kaldas as a rare, and it's also a feel bad. Always take your prize support until something else changes in A for Revolt packs. And the dynamic of this pack is incredibly interesting. And I go back to Wasteland as well as Force of Will. They were uncommons, so the price of a alliance box is much higher than you would ex expect because the chase card, Force of Will, is an uncommon. The same could be said, said about Wasteland before it was reprinted, right? Interesting scenario with A for Revolt. For the first time in some time, we see a $5 uncommon that has held its price. Most uncommons do not hold a $5 price for longer than the first week they come out. This uncommon is different. This uncommon is obviously modern playable. This uncommon reminds me a lot of, it reminds me of a card, Inquisition of Kozilak. And I believe Inquisition of Kozilak was a four or $5 card for some time. And then it became hard to find them. If magic keeps growing and Wizard of the Coast says it's growing or at least generating more revenue, then this card will eventually be harder to find. So as a long-term speculation, I will take as many of these as I can. As a pack expected value, the expected value of the pack is very, it's not affected very much by mythics because again, mythics are not, you're not gonna get, there's too many mythics and the probability of getting the correct mythic that is valuable is not high. The, valuable, the value of the pack is in its rare, is largely speaking, unless it has an uncommon like this one. If this pack, if this set has an uncommon where you can pull it and you pay for the pack, that's amazing. That's amazing. I've only seen that a few times. Uh, Stoke the Flames is a really good one. A good example was a seven, eight dollar card, maybe even nine dollar card for uncommon. Uh, there, there's probably a few that I'm missing, and you can leave a comment below. But it feels good for the expected value of a box or a pack when there's a $5 uncommon in that set. And I hope Wizard of the Coast does this in the future as well, because it really makes me actually wanna open packs of A for Revolt. I did not wanna open a single Kaladesh pack. I did not want to open, I don't wanna open Eldritch Moon packs anymore. Like I have tons of Eldritch Moon fat packs. Cause I, I love the Liliana artwork. And to be quite honest, I know that fat pack, fat pack artwork will eventually be worth something because I collect fat packs. <laughs> I don't, don't ask me why, but I do. Anyway, leave me a comment below if you agree, you disagree. I feel like Wizard of the Coast should add more $5 on commons because that's, that's how you get people to open packs. That's how people will open a box and be like, oh good, I got my value back. Anyway, bye guys.